When China pointed its eyes to the moon, the world barely blinked. But now, the discoveries they've made there are flipping every old assumption on its head. We so legitimately don't know what China is doing on the other side of the moon? No, we don't. If China can cool their quantum computers with helium-3 before we can, the jig is up. This isn't just another space mission, it's a seismic shift that's left even the US speechless. China's space agency CNSA stunned the world when it successfully bounced a laser beam off its lunar orbiter Tiandu-1 from Earth to the moon and back, all in daylight. That kind of laser-ranging accuracy, down to centimeters, has never been done before under full sun, and the implications are huge. Ultra-precise navigation for future lunar missions, live grounding control for landing rovers, probes, and even Taikonauts as they touch down on the far side of the moon. Changji 6 delivered nearly two kilograms of rock and soil samples from the moon's far side, the first ever return of lunar material from that hemisphere in history. These samples came from the South Pole Aitken Basin, the deepest, oldest basin in the solar system, and China's scientists have already found telling clues inside them about hydration and geology. Down in the lab, those rocks revealed something extraordinary. They contain a hydrated mineral with over 40% water by mass, chemically bound in a crystal structure comparable to terrestrial fumarole salts. This isn't ice and it's not surface vapor, it's actual water locked in molecular form and stable in sunlight. Chinese scientists then stunned the world again using Chang'e 5 samples when they discovered a way to extract water from lunar soil, up to 51 to 76 kilograms per ton. That means a single ton of regolith could sustain water needs for dozens of astronauts a day. This breakthrough shifts the lunar resource equation dramatically. While the global space community reacts, Chinese researchers have uncovered yet another reservoir. Millions of impact glass beads within the Chang'e 5 samples turned out to absorb water from the solar wind and store it, potentially holding billions of tons of hydrated material. This suggests the lunar surface itself may act as a steady water sponge. Meanwhile, Chang'e 6 far side soil analysis from over 578 particles found that the far side is significantly drier, less than 1.5 micrograms of water per gram compared to near side averages. It raises new questions about uneven water distribution, ancient crust dynamics, and why one hemisphere holds so much less. At NASA hearings, leaders warned that China could formally claim the moon's south pole as its territory if the US delays. The Wolf Amendment still restricts NASA from direct cooperation with China, meaning even as samples and data are shared internationally, US scientists face bureaucratic walls. This is not warming up, it's full throttle. China plans to land astronauts by 2030 and complete a joint international lunar research station with Russia by 2035, leveraging these discoveries and tech leaps. With precise laser ranging, real water, soil extraction methods and global research partnerships, they're scripting a lunar future and daring others to catch up. Just beneath the cratered dust, Chang'e 6's payload unearthed a rare mineral known as armalcolite, previously only found at Apollo sites. But here's the twist. The chemical composition was different, suggesting a geological evolution path never observed before. That means the moon's far side may have had a completely distinct volcanic history with processes that defy current models of lunar formation. Then came the biggest surprise, traces of helium-3 embedded in the lunar soil, an isotope almost non-existent on Earth, but believed to be a potential fuel for nuclear fusion. Unlike other sources, these particles weren't just theoretical, they were measurable. With a ton of lunar regolith containing up to 20 micrograms, China's findings reignited the helium-3 energy race, a dream many in the West had shelved decades ago. To test and verify the effects of the Moon's unique environment on human biology, CNSA also ran high-precision bio-exposure experiments aboard their returning Chang'e capsules. Seed samples, exposed to cosmic radiation and microgravity, returned with unexpected mutation rates and growth acceleration, sparking serious conversation around lunar farming. But behind all this progress, US policymakers were quietly alarmed, because for every rock China brought home, it also brought leverage. 
At a recent Senate committee meeting, analysts warned that Beijing's territorial intentions around the South Pole were strategic, not scientific. The region holds constant sunlight, frozen water, and now possibly helium-3 rich terrain, a trifecta of dominance. The public discourse, though, took a dramatic turn when satellite images showed a high-frequency radar experiment conducted by Tiandu-1 that mapped subsurface tunnels and lava tubes more than 100 meters deep. These structures could serve as natural protection against radiation and temperature swings, ideal for long-term human settlement. And now, with Chang'e 7 and 8 already lined up for full-scale robotic construction tests, China isn't asking whether the moon is the next frontier, it's treating it like it already owns the blueprint. And with that came whispers of something even wilder. If ancient internal water existed, what else did the moon once store beneath its shell? The discovery led to a renewed focus on lunar core studies, and China's seismometers picked up faint quakes, suggesting a partially molten layer, contradicting decades of Western assumption that the moon was geologically dead. Adding to the pressure, the Chinese Space Agency signed a string of international collaborations with Russia, Venezuela, the UAE, and even Pakistan to form what it calls the ILRS, International Lunar Research Station. While the US champions the Artemis Accords, China's bloc is offering open access to lunar resources in exchange for loyalty. It's not just a science contest anymore, it's the blueprint for a new space order. The psychological edge was also carefully curated. Unlike the US, China live-streamed large portions of their mission landings, revealing real-time surface scans, detailed mineral collection, and even public data archives. This transparency wasn't just PR, it was a flex, and with each stream, their global scientific credibility only grew stronger. China's soft power play didn't stop there. In 2025, it plans to launch the Kachao-2 satellite, a next-gen lunar relay system that will support multiple nations' far-side missions. That means any country wanting access to this data or planning missions beyond line of sight may have to rely on Chinese infrastructure. It's like owning the only toll bridge into the future. And while some still dismiss these milestones as overhyped, the US government clearly doesn't. Leaked briefings from NASA's internal lunar strategy team reference the need to counter soft lunar dominance by accelerating Artemis III. But the clock is ticking and China's lead is growing. What started as a dusty rock race has quietly evolved into the greatest planetary contest since the Cold War. But this time, it's not about flags. It's about building the first civilization beyond Earth. But here's what made global analysts sit up. A set of spectral readings from the far side revealed hydroxyl molecules, the building blocks of water, not just in polar craters, but in rock layers believed to be billions of years old. This wasn't surface ice from passing comets. Instead, it pointed to endogenic hydration, water potentially formed through internal volcanic or geochemical processes. That single detail dismantled years of assumption that the moon was dry and inert. If water once existed within its crust, then something more complex must have been happening beneath the surface. And that opened the door to something even more significant. China's instruments, especially the seismometers placed by the Chang'e 4 mission, began picking up weak but consistent tremors, so-called moonquakes. These seismic signals suggested that the moon might not be geologically dead after all. The presence of a partially molten layer near the core was now being seriously reconsidered. It wasn't just about water anymore, it was about an active moon, a place where chemical and thermal activity might still be shaping its future. China's moon mission has disrupted expectations worldwide. Instead of routine surface scans, their team uncovered unusual isotopes beneath the lunar crust, clues pointing to untapped resources and ancient planetary shifts. The precision of their lander stunned even veteran observers, while onboard AI systems adapted flawlessly to hostile terrain. Global scientists now face a new benchmark in space engineering. Meanwhile, US officials are recalibrating priorities as China accelerates plans for a permanent lunar outpost. What once seemed like distant ambition now feels like immediate reality. This isn't just exploration anymore. It's competition with sky-high stakes, and China may be winning round one. That strategic move shook Washington. Suddenly, multiple emerging space powers were choosing the Chinese bloc. Why? Because CNSA wasn't just promising scientific glory, it was offering infrastructure. 
reliable comms, mission support and most critically, access to data. China opened its lunar databases to the public, releasing thousands of high res images, topographical scans and sample breakdowns. Meanwhile, the Artemis missions were still battling delays and restricted briefings. One of the most startling breakthroughs came during the Chang'e 5-T1 return capsule mission. When samples were analyzed in Beijing's state-run labs, scientists found an unusual lunar mineral, dubbed Changesite Y. It held traces of helium-3, a stable isotope considered the holy grail for nuclear fusion. Unlike Earth-based fusion challenges, the Moon's surface was thought to contain vast, untapped helium-3 reserves. Suddenly, lunar mining wasn't science fiction. It was a looming geopolitical race. Amid all this, the launch of Kuechiao-2 became another major card in China's hand. This second-gen communication satellite would orbit the Earth-Moon L2 point, providing constant data relay between Earth and the Moon's far side. What that means, China will be the only country able to maintain real-time communications with any far-side missions, essentially controlling the only bridge to that hemisphere of space. It's not a land grab, it's a data grab. And while the headlines focused on exploration, quiet warnings began appearing in US Department of Defense briefings. These new lunar capabilities, especially the potential for placing signal blocking or comms dominating satellites at Lagrange points, could allow for space-based electronic warfare. If China were to deploy advanced relays or interceptors from the moon's far side, it could compromise satellite networks, GPS and missile tracking systems without immediate detection. The message was now clear. China wasn't just racing for space bragging rights, it was laying down the new digital and energy infrastructure of space itself. Control the moon, and you don't just explore it, you own the future lanes of communication, resource extraction, and possibly even planetary defense. And the scariest part for the West, they're already late. What's more? In the next 50 years, China is expected to become a dominant force in the global space industry. From establishing a permanent lunar research station by the 2030s to Mars missions, China will likely expand its Tiangong space station and lead deep space exploration missions to various other asteroids and Jupiter. With significant investment in satellite technology, reusable rockets, and space-based solar power, China is poised to challenge existing space powers. Its growing international collaborations and independent advancements suggest a future where China plays a central role in shaping space exploration and technology. In conclusion, China's moon mission wasn't just a discovery, it was a statement. As the dust settles on the lunar surface, one thing's clear. The space race just got personal. Hit like if this blew your mind and drop your thoughts below, do you think the US can catch up? Or is China already miles ahead? Also, before you leave, don't forget to subscribe. We're just getting started. Thanks for watching.